Hi everyone, uh, I got something very nice to tell you. Um, but before I do, I'm gonna sit down because uh, I like sitting down. Some of you might have noticed already that more and more people from the community are working together with our front labs to help the game progress. So we have community managers, we have um, moderators, and they have also asked me to create video content for their YouTube channel, and they're also paying me to continue making video content for my own channel. So just so that you know, this is a, an amazing opportunity for me because I can combine everything that I love. I can combine table tennis, filming. I mean, it's also VR, which is something that I really like, um, obviously. So uh, for me, this is uh, very, very nice. And also, it allows me at this point to combine it with taking care two days a week of my 18-month-old uh, son, which is ideal. It's really perfect. Weirdly, as you noticed, uh, the controller is showing through my paddle right now. So as you can see, I'm using the Sunlucky adapter. I'll just um, use this moment to explain why this is the best, best adapter in the game. It's because the ring is on the top when you're playing a forehand, which means that it's almost always in view of the cameras. The older versions had the ring on the bottom, and actually on the, the other side, you see already, I'm losing tracking, right? So because your arm blocks the view with the camera when you try to do a forehand, it loses track very, very easily. It starts floating. But like this, with the ring on top, the tracking is practically perfect. So this is the advanced video of the fast serve and how to return it. We'll go more into depth um, on how to return it and how to do the serve better yourself. And first of all, I'm going to start with um, doing the exercise I was doing in the other video, um, but doing it random. So you can see how that works. And we'll take it from there. Let's imagine that I know it's going to come along. So I take a couple of steps back. You see, once you get used to this, even if you don't hit it well, it returns fast, right? So I'm not really attacking right now, but it returns fast, meaning just returning it a lot of the time is enough to score the point. You do the little wristy thing that will help you out. The middle, like always, is hard to see if it's going to be more to the forehand, more to the back end. What you can always do, of course, is make it an obvious forehand or back end by moving your feet as long as you know is going there. So why is this serve bad? Well, we already talked about it, right? If I do this serve like this, you can see it coming a mile away. Even if it's fast and there's a lot of spin at a certain level, the spin and speed will not bother your opponent anymore. You have to know at a certain level, when your serve goes long and it's not a surprise, it will get attacked right away. This is why when you look and uh, at videos, you will probably see most people, most professionals serving, almost always from the same position. And this is not because they only have one serve, no. They have a lot of serves, but they all start from the same position. They make you wait to the last, 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 last moment to show you if they're gonna put underspin, side spin, top spin, if it's gonna be fast or short. Just imagine that I'm serving like this, and now I'm gonna serve my fast serve. It's super obvious. What you wanna do is, you wanna do short serves like this and maybe a little bit there maybe a little bit to the back end and then a faster one to the middle for example the faster ones to the to the forehand is harder why because it's easier right if it's to the clear forehand they can just spin it up so it's best to do a serve like that to the middle unless you know that they're prepared for the middle and they leave their forehand wide open. You can do the same to the back end, and then you can speed it up. It's not as fast as this one. It's not as spinny as that one, maybe, but the element of surprise is much more important. So I'm always serving there, short, fast to the back end. It only works at a higher level 
when it's in combination with a lot of other serves. So you can use it as a surprise, because if you do this serve, like 20 times in a row, nobody's gonna be surprised, they'll be ready. If you're playing at a lower level and somebody has trouble with your one serve, I mean, even at a higher level, there's no shame in using that serve to make points. I'm just saying, once you get to a certain level, you will need more than just one specific serve. You will need a combination of serves and you will need to think of serves as being on a continuum, right? When you're serving, it's not just about choosing the most effective serve. It's about choosing the most effective serve in relation to the other serves that you've been doing and that you will do. So maybe you'll be like, oh, why is he putting this short one there already? Like, he's been doing this all match. Maybe it's just because the returning ball is, ball is easy for me, but also because it's hard for you to do anything else with it. But also because then you're not expecting this one. Now about returning. What I showed you before was a neutral stance that's in the middle of the table. And I think in this game is a good idea, unless you have a lot of space. You can be forehand oriented, which means that you're actually waiting around the corner, not when your opponent is serving from that side, right? Like I'm a left-hander, so I always put the ball launcher to serve from a right-hander's perspective. That's why it's there. A left-hander, if they're forehand oriented, they will be more here because they have to be prepared for the ball coming here, but mostly they have to be prepared for a really wide serve to the forehand. So imagine that the serve is coming in from there and they do a fast serve. You take a small step backward and you attack with your forehand. They serve from there to the middle, easy. They serve to the forehand, you move a little bit, you finish the point, everything forehand. Uh, if you have enough space to pivot, that's something that you can do for sure. But of course you need the space to be able to pivot because if they know you start doubting, they will just always play here and you will always play like a softer ball. So you have to either decide to really go for the back end or really pivot, not stay somewhere in between. If you don't have enough space or if you're not specifically looking for using your, your forehand to return like that, you stay more or less in neutral position in the middle. Like I said, if they're serving from there, you move a little bit to the side that has the most uh, angle available. I would actually maybe even catch a serve to the middle with my backhand because I have to cover the deep forehand. If the ball is coming from the other side, this point will probably be a forehand because I have to cover for the angle that is created in the backhand. If I am standing here, prepared to play forehand all over the whole table with somebody serving me from that side, if they play me deep to the forehand, instead of moving sideways like we usually do, you can actually move like you're running, right? So you put one foot here and then you play the ball and at the same time this is my leg right so you're like you play the ball and you land in the position that is stable so you can return to a, a good neutral point right for most of us we will be staying in the middle so what do we do when there's a deep forehand when there's a backhand small stroke when there's a forehand that's a little bit deep, you can do one thing, which is just move one foot and, and use the wrist, like I showed before. So, or you can move both your feet and use your body for a full stroke. So I'm here. Whoa. Okay, now I'll move both my feet. Of course, I want everybody in the game to move their feet a lot like they do in real life, but we have to be realistic, right? Even if you move just as one foot, it will take your breath away. Moving both your feet is not easy in, uh, in VR. I know that because I also have something here. So it's very scary to move fast towards that direction. No matter where you're playing from, there's different ways of, of returning. But in this case, we'll talk about um, returning with side spin, some angles, fade, because it might help you. You can do it quite neutral, which is like this, right? A little bit of wrist for control. And then you can add 
side spin. You go a little bit more on the side of the ball. Still have to catch it on top of the ball or it will fly up because it's a top spin serve. But you can add quite some side spin to it. Now, fade. All right. So instead of doing the normal motion that we do, which is over the ball, we're now to the side of the ball and over the ball. We can actually try to find the other side. So while, while in here, when we're trying to do side spin to that direction, we're trying to touch the top of the ball on the left side of the ball. In this case, you're trying to do the, the opposite. So you're still on top of the ball, but more towards the right. And moving your paddle from left to right across the ball is what gives you this effect. Now, why am I playing most of them there? It's because it opens the angle to the deep forehand, right? And the ball goes away like this. Let's take a look at the backhand. Try to do the same thing. So first it's neutral, right? Just basically lifting it and there's a little like a natural side effect to the left because of how your wrist works, right? More side spin then. You see it jumps off a little bit more and now the fade, which is one of the easiest, but it's very dangerous, right? The fade in the back end becomes very natural to some people. But if you do it badly, if it's not going out, it can go very, very high, right? So basically, you can always spin like this, but you can also go for the outside and try to get it to curve back out. If they are expecting it, it's the same as a serve. If you're seeing it, if you see it happen, it is easy to prepare for and finish the point. To make sure that these videos reach everybody they should reach, please make sure to subscribe and like and do the same on the Eleven YouTube channel. And um, put in the comments what you want to see next. And also, if you have a proposal, um, mention if you would like to be invited um, to join me here in this room. You just have to keep in mind that right now what I'm doing here is in beta. Um, but it's very easy to get access to, you just need to get on to the Discord server and I'll put the link to the Discord server in the description. All right, so bye. Uh, yeah, one last thing before I go nowhere because of course there's no door here. Let me tell you that I uh, will put a link in the description with the basic exercises, the advanced uh, drills and also a version of the serve that you just saw. So you can just get one JSON and get everything in there. Um, the way we share drills is gonna change in the future, but for now this is the best that I can do. Um, and I'll try to make that file grow as we as we go along in videos. So I hope uh, people enjoy that. On Discord there's a really nice community and they will help you out with whatever questions you have about the drills, ball launcher, anything, anything you need. You'll see me soon again in one of these videos and I hope to see you one day in the game itself and maybe even at the table and maybe even in the same video.